Okay, so what I thought I'd show you is a quick intro into using SharePoint Designer to create workflows with SharePoint Online. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to log into our Office 365 uh, system and I've logged in here as Lewis Collins. If I go to the cog in the top right, you'll see that I have a menu that I can select from. Pull that down and select Office 365 Settings. Now when we select that, you'll see that there is an option on the left now for software. So if we click that again, that will take us to the software that we are able to download for our license of Office 365. So in this case I've got an Enterprise SKU, an E3 SKU, which means that I have Office, but if you go into the Tools and Add-ins options you'll see that SharePoint Designer is an add-on that you can download. Um, SharePoint Designer is a free download from Microsoft, so you can go to the, SharePoint, uh, to the Microsoft download site and simply download that and install it on your system. So with that, um, once you have uh, SharePoint Designer installed, you'll see it uh, looks like this when it runs. So then what we need to do basically is just go in and click on Open Site, type in the URL and log into the site, and then you'll be taken to it. But I've already done that, so I will click that to uh, log me quickly into my recent site there. Now what that's going to do when it completes is it will show me an overview of my site. So here you'll see this is the site called Cloud Business. If you have a look at the lists and the libraries you'll see over here um, that basically mimics what we have in our browser here. Now what happens is by default when I create a workflow what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to a list. Um, I can create other types of workflows but this one I'm just going to show you a list. So I go into the top left, select the down button and I'm going to attach this workflow to um, the documents library. So I'm going to call this, give it a name, so I'm going to call it first workflow and you'll see here I can choose the platform whether it's 2010 or 2013. So I'll leave it as 2013 and that will now uh, place me into the edit mode where I can go in and edit uh, my workflow. So you'll see the, the flashing cursor here indicating where I am in my coding. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up and I'm just going to do something really simple. I'm going to send an email and that then puts that action into my workflow. You'll see that I get a hyperlink that I need to select to pick more users. So I will go into my address book and I will go through my list of users here and I will send Lewis Collins an email and I will say simply that new document has arrived. So what I want to do basically with this workflow is basically send an email to Lewis to let him know uh, a new document um, has been uploaded to the site. Now obviously we can do a lot more than that but just giving you the basic idea. So now we're going to send an email to Lewis Collins with that information. Now even though this is the only uh, step or stage in our workflow, it's always good practice to uh, end the workflow correctly. So we'll go to the transition stage and we'll pull down action again. You'll see that the context changes. I now have the option to go to stage. I can now pick a stage to go to and in this stage I'm going to end the workflow. So this now is the complete side of our workflow. We're going to send an email to Lewis and then we're going to terminate that. Now that workflow by default will only run uh, manually if a user launches it. If we want it to happen automatically we need to go to workflow settings up here on the right. We then need to have a look at the start option. So at the moment you'll see that the only option that is selected is the option to start it manually. So what I'm going to do is select the option to start the workflow automatically when an item is created. So that means every time a new item is created in the document library then this workflow will execute. So I'm happy with that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to publish that workflow. So I do that in the top left hand corner and that will then push it up to my SharePoint site underneath the document list we've got here called documents. So I'm attaching this workflow to my document library called documents. So that'll take a minute or two obviously to upload into uh, SharePoint Online and configure that correctly. So that is now done without any errors. If I go back to my document site, you'll see here is the document library I have attached the workflow to. The way that I can check that is if I go to the library tab in the top left and then go to workflow settings all the way over here on the right, you'll see now that I have a workflow attached to this library which is 
obviously the name that we just created called first workflow okay so really as simple as that so now let's execute this workflow or we'll make it operate so what I've got here is three documents so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another document and I'm going to drag and drop that into SharePoint and that will now upload as you see so that now runs uh, that document story is now uploaded you'll see what has also happened here is is that I now have an additional column that has been added to my view here that is the name of the workflow so again this will give me an indication of where the workflow is currently operating so I'll need to just refresh the page so we can see uh, what that field has updated to and you'll see now that the hello world has uh, run and the workflow is now at stage one so if we go back to our um, workflow and we go back and edit it you'll see that stage one there corresponds to the stage that we've put into our workflow so again that's a, a quick way you can debug it you can obviously go in and call your stages whatever again remember that a workflow may be pausing to do um, some other involved processes so this column here tells you at what stage the workflow currently is so all we need to do now is pop over to uh, the Outlook so we are logged in as Lewis and we just need to wait for that email that was generated by the workflow to turn up. Okay, so we've come to the mailbox and you'll see that the email has arrived and it has got the text that we uh, indicated there. So now we know that that workflow has completed successfully. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll again go back to sites. So what we'll do is go back to sites, we'll go back to the cloud business and we'll go back to our document library so that workflow that we've just created that sends an email has been done uh, executed correctly now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a condition here so this is an action so I put the cursor above the action as you can see it blinking there I go to condition and one of the conditions I want to select is if any value equals any value so what I'm going to do now is do basically a logical test so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if and what I can do here is select the function key and look in the current item for um, the user who created the item okay so what I'm going to say here is if the current item was created by equals now I can change that by clicking on it but I'm happy with that if I go to value and I go down here and I select Lewis Collins I go add so what we're going to do here is say if the current item that's uploaded into the library is created by Lewis Collins then it's going to execute this piece this box directly underneath it now what I'm going to do obviously now is go in here and add another action and I'm going to set a field in this current I the new item that's just been uploaded so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the title to a set value so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the um, field name or title to just the word change there so I'm happy with that and if this condition fails then it will go through and email as normal so what we'll get is if the condition is true it will change the title field and then email if it isn't true we'll just get an email okay so before we do that let me just go back and show you so as you can see here the title field currently is blank for all these documents so if I select this document and I go into manage and then select to edit the properties what you'll see is that there is a title field okay so there's the name of the document and the title field so I'm going to manipulate that using the workflow again we need to make sure that our uh, workflow is set so that it will automatically run when a document is uploaded so that's the case so we're happy with that once again we now publish that that will update the workflow that is attached to that document library overwrite the code that we created previously and update that with the new set of instructions so again that'll take a second or two to upload to uh, SharePoint online so that's done without errors now if we go back to our document library what we'll do now is we'll upload a another document so I'll take this one here drag and drop that in you'll see that that will upload to um, SharePoint online again okay so again if we refresh this uh, what we should see is you can see um, the title was already set there by default but if I now refresh this 
what we'll see is, is you can see that the field name for the document that I just uploaded, this South document, has been altered to what we set in our workflow and the workflow is now complete and at stage one so we know that's that's worked well now if we then go back to our outlook again we should also see that we've received a second email as part of um, that workflow process and there it is there's the confirmation that the email has come through to us so what we've been able to do is we've been able to attach an automated process which is known as a workflow to an item in SharePoint Online. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to attach some code that runs when a document is uploaded into this document library here. The way that we do that is we use a product, a free product from Microsoft called SharePoint Designer. We go in there and we basically create a workflow and we then do that by adding conditions and actions um, around a blocks of code to allow us to execute different commands to allow us to have our automated process. So hopefully that's given you a quick overview of what um, workflows are in SharePoint Online. I thank you very much for watching this video.